Good day everyone. My name is Oriola Oluwajunla and welcome to Money Machine. Uh I want to appreciate everyone who has subscribed, liked, and joined the Telegram group. I believe that those in the Telegram group are getting what they they, they need to get from the group. Um and congrats to those who got updates. Who got the nine or six dollar from the update I posted earlier? And um I want to apologize to everyone for not posting videos here. For those who made requests, I am really, really sorry. I fell ill and um, lost some money. And so that's why I've not been available. So today we're going to be looking at bedrocks for lighter taxes. Tax. So we'll be, look, we'll be looking at bedrocks. We're going to be looking at the keys and how do I, how do you tax? How do you do the job? I'm going to be leading us into the process and uh, I'm going to do the same thing for segmentation and all other to these tags then we can begin to do projects specifically one after the other thank you guys for subscribing let's get to job okay all right we will be needing um keyboard we'll be needing a keyboard very soon and uh, just follow okay we'll be here so I'm going to review the course I've done it before so I'm going to review it and I I, I made a video earlier on this but it was about one hour so I had to make it shorter and remove something so now please this video I want you to watch it you're going to upload it uh, okay if you if you watching this YouTube video I want you to create another tab where you get it running on your system please self-driving cars are now a reality take a look around Cars are already driving themselves on the roads of California, Texas, Arizona, Washington, Pennsylvania. Vehicles that pass by and any other vehicle in. All right. Um, I'll try to explain this. What that video is trying to say is. What the video is trying to say is that there are self-driving cars currently. That are being used in various parts of the world and this car uses lidar devices the devices is on top of the car that release um that captures the environment in the forms of ray called lidar points and then the car uses the information gotten through those rays or lidar points to relate with its environment and navigate its path making sure the the car and the persons inside the car are safe so that's it about lidar points so the the physical environment is seen in seen as lidar view in a 3d view using lidar points and other points i'm going to be telling us about depending on the project okay another thing we'll see about um, the the um three the three d tax is that it pays more it takes a lot it takes much time it takes a longer time and then when you when you, it takes a more powerful computer compared to other systems yeah it takes time it is it is more powerful you need to get um let me give you a spec let me give you a spec for 3d tax all right um if you want to do a 3d tax if you want to do a 3d tax please i would advise you have uh, a system that has a video card memory, a video card RAM, okay, um, a dedicated video RAM. It's quite different from the RAM of a system. You can have an 8 gig or 16 gig um, system, but if it has a 2 gig or 4 gig uh, video RAM, it will work better on a 3D tax. Uh, I remember trying to use my 16 gig RAM system without uh, a video card. I couldn't pass a test, but when I had it on my video, and when I got a better system with a better um, with with a video RAM, 
I was able to run that project and run it very fast. I could see objects that I could not see in um, the system that doesn't have a video ramp. So if you want to do 3D taxes, tax, I would advise you get a system with a video ram. It will help, it will help um, project the tax better. All right, so we're going, please take some of these little, little tips and please watch to the end, watch to the end. So you don't miss anything at all, okay? That's okay. Let's see the basics of drawing, okay? Uh, please listen to this, listen to this, to make this video shorter and to, I would have loved we do it together, but I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. All right, for moving, for moving, you have the, okay, let's play it a little bit. For moving, you have the ASW key, all right, the ASW key. I'm going to be showing us in the scene, but for now, let me just, um, let me play some part. This video is about the top left-hand corner, what that looks like in the image. I can see a truck here, which might, might be good for animation based on the images that I'm looking at. So when you're annotating an object, you always want to see the ladder points. I'm going to look at the ladder points for all 61 frames in this task. In this situation, we're not going to use ground points. Here you can click around through the different hand check here to see the use the left and right arrow keys to change backwards in the frames. It's still going to be in the same exact place. So, so there's um, the way that you annotate a stationary object. Okay, I'm going to try to explain some of these things, but please watch this video. What you have to do is just open it on another text and watch it, watch it clearly. I may not have the time to explain all of it together, okay? Okay, this has to do with coloring. It has to do with coloring. It has to do with um, labeling. All right, this is, you get it with the L key. All right, maybe when I'm doing the scene, you just have a material down where you can jot up some things, okay? Please watch the videos. All right, you know, I told us that to move, to move, uh, to move, we use the A, W, S the key, W for up, S for back, A for left, D for right. So they're asking us how do we move to the left. So we choose the A. Okay. Now how to rotate to rotate my view. Now to rotate your view, you use the the arrow keys. Okay. Uh, to rotate, you use either the right or the left arrow key. Okay. Now, the up and down keys are to toggle up or to toggle down, is to look up or to look down. Why the left to right is to turn around, to turn around, to turn side to side, okay? So, we're choosing the left, right key. Right? How do I go full screen? Now, there's, there's a C button. There's a C. When you click on your C key, yeah, or you click on the top mail, I'm going to show us that and yeah that's how before annotating anything you must make sure it's fitting the top part of your screen the top part of your screen like this guy it's facing up the the top of your screen yeah so it really matters it helps you walk faster make it easier not too much of editing. How do we make a new cobot? How to make a make new cobot is that you use your mouse, you drag over an object, just like what you've seen here. Mouse go over and drag, okay? So you click and then. Please be fast for us. Then adjust the dimensions. The first thing, after you have drawn your cuboid, the next thing to do is to select a label, okay? I'm going to show us all of this 
when they give us a scenario. What's wrong with my network? Please network. Alright. Yeah, just waiting for the network. How can we adjust the placement of a keyboard? Okay, so adjust the placement of a keyboard. Um You drag and drop with cursor. You use the shift. You use this. So, how do we make that small adjustments? Uh, you can use the degree. You can drag and drop the heading and the overhead. Shift left and right. Yeah. Actually, it's these two, but in this case, I don't know why it's the four. Yeah, to do small changes, you need to turn, press the left or right arrow key, or you touch the overhead. I'm going to show us the overhead view, okay? With the keyboard selected to the keyboard detail panel, which LIDAR view should we check to make sure and to check? You have to check the overhead view, you have to check the back view, you have to check the side view, you have to check all the views. I'm going to show us all these views. Okay. I pray we have a scenario on directional heading. Directional heading. Directional heading. Please watch this video. I beg you. I beg you so that you have a good understanding of this tax. It's no good you pass the test and you're not able to do the tax. So please pass. Check this video out watch it from the beginning to the end i'm going to upload the long video too and i'm going to upload this this will be easier i think i have to do that so that um, a lot of people will get it which way on an object should the direction head and face uh, it must be facing the front of the object and the shaded part of the object is the front of the object okay is the direction ahead okay this is a man on a bicycle, an adult or a child on a bicycle, and then, yeah, this is a LiDAR point of view, okay. How can we tell the headings, okay? You check for the part that is shaded, all right. Um, you check the camera view. Like this camera view, you can see that it's shaded. Then click on keyboard to open the keyboard detail panel and check close up the lighter views. You can check that in the lighter view. Okay, something like this. This is a lighter view, a 2D, 2D panel. Okay, I'm going to show us when we get to a scenario too. Oh, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes. Let's go to the scenario. I know I've completed it, but I have to show my guys something here. So we we'll wait for it to load. It's loaded already, so we are starting now. So we'll click on start. Hide. Okay. It's loading C. Good. Here is where I'm going to show you all that I want to show you, most of the things I'm going to be showing you. We got our keyboard here. Keyboard is set.
people to sit, so. We also sit. All right. Can you see the keyboard? Good. Now, watch how I move. All right. All right, guys. So, um, I believe you can see what I'm doing here. So all the keys just followed, pressing the A as the first key, okay? This alternator, okay? All right, so let's go. Now, to, to turn to the right, I'm pressing the R key to the right, you can see, okay? To turn to the left, turn it like this, okay? So I believe we got that, all right? Turning, you're still at the same point, turning up, okay? Turning down, turning up, turning down, left, right, up again, all right? So this is how to turn in W moving forward we move S moving backward D move to the right A move to the left W move to the front okay are we getting it so that's how to move W you move to the front S you move to the back D, you move to the right, A, you move to the left, arrow right, you turn right, arrow left, you turn left, arrow up, you turn upward, then downward, okay? Then the arrow down is for downward, all right? So we are looking for an object, let's turn face upward, we are looking for a curve. All right, the first time I saw this, I thought it was a car, I thought... From the this view, I thought it was a car, but let's hover around. Now, I wanted to see that this is how to change to camera view, right? Like we said, you can click on here, click on here. These are called thumbnails. This is how to change to camera view. Okay. All right. Let me let me. Uh, I think it's not obstructing. Is it? I feel so. Okay, let me put it up. Sorry. So this is how to turn. You press the letter C. Oh no, I need it on. Press the letter C to turn from this to this, okay? And then, apart from that, you can also, you can also click on any of the thumbnails, okay? Any of these thumbnails. Any of these thumbnails will give you a camera view. Good, I will go to go. I will go to that. So the first thing to move, we use the WASD. To turn, we use the arrows key. To check, we use, to check the camera view, we use thumbnails or press the C button. Okay. All right. I believe we've got that. So let's, um, Let's continue. So, yeah, have to find any object that looks like a car. Yeah. Now remember that it must be facing the top part of our screen. 
was facing the top of our screen. Yeah, we got one. It's looking like a car, but let's see. Now, it's here. Look at um. Okay. Look at this. Look at the left. Look at the thumbnail by the left, the bigger one. You can see that it's showing yeah, an SUV. Yeah, that's the car. That's the car we are we are touching. That's the car we are touching right now. It's showing the SUV. Right? So it shows that that is a real object. So you can check there. I was thinking this was a car, but when I looked at it from this angle, I found it was not a car, it was something else. Okay. But here our arrow is there, it's showing that it is a car. Alright. So what do we do? We we go over that car. We go over the car like this and then we drag. Okay. Now, after you draw, the next thing to do is to select a label. What's this? It's a car. So, we select a label. Now, a car could either be stationary or dynamic. Okay. But this tax is a one car. Um, it's a one frame. It's one frame. One frame. One of frame. So we don't really need to put it whether it's stationary or dynamic. So we're going to draw. We're going to give it sizing. Now, where's the directional heading of this car? When you look at the overhead view, this tells you this is a directional heading. Okay. Because this is the shaded part. Here again, this is the shaded part. If you if we give it a camera view, can we have a camera view? Yeah, it's the shaded part. Okay. So now how do we do small adjustments to uh directional heading? You remember we did something like that? Look at what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn it a little bit. Yeah. So we've got directional heading. Okay. Now Remember, we have to check both the overhead view. This is, I'm working on the overhead view now. Okay. And this overhead view. This is the back side. Okay. You need to press uh, V to change it to this key. V, V. Should I, should I show you? Okay. Let's see if the keyboard. Is the keyboard we allow yeah okay so the v 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 all right so you see the v toggles between the back view and the side view so we're going to look at it it has a point here and uh, it's too tall reduce it i'm not trying to leave any point behind that is actually an echo so let's leave our car like this okay check the back view everything is together All right then we have the bottom z this talk about the car and the ground all right then you can have the cameras that have captured this car camera three has it camera three has this uh picture the picture of the car in the camera view so so that you can be sure that you've actually captured the the right object and you've labeled it correctly then you can have the coordinate coordinates all right then if you want to rotate you want to rotate by 3 180 it turns the frame actually to the to face the other side can you see Oh no. It 
turns the frame to face the other side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 90. 90. The frame is facing opposite. Here is it. Correct. So it must be facing the front. Direction are heading. And these are other tools that are necessary. As you proceed, you learn more. All right, there's one more thing I want to show us. Uh, it's called the laboring. All right, I'm just going to show us the key in a short while. And, um, all right, this is the elf key. All right, elf key will toggle T. Let's press T so that we see from the up view. T toggles T, T, T. Make it an overhead view of everything. Yeah. So, um, so T, T, um, T toggles this, then we have L. L shows the various label, label and attributes. Okay. Tells you bottom Z, uses bottom Z. You can see that here. It's shown here. Keyboard ID, um, by label. So, these are all cars, so they are all having red color, okay? Red color. This is a car, too. But this is not a car, it's a bus. So it's having a different color. Okay. This is stationary. This is car. This is having a different color. Let's have another one. Keyboards by bottom Z. It's using bottom Z to check, okay? Distance from LIDAR. So, um, sorry. So we use this for label. We use this for to check. It's using bottom Z here. Keyboard ID. And all of that. It can use, when it gets to other tags, it uses attributes like cars that are parked, cars that have the brake light on, and cars that do not have the brake light on. I believe we got everything correctly. So we use this to toggle to differentiate cars, okay? Cars that have the same listing, like has the same attributes. Yeah, we can easily detect them, okay? So let's submit. I hope they give us 100%. Woo, we got 100%. We got 100%. All right, so we're going to continue. Now, here talks about APC. Uh, APC is used for finding APC is used for APC is used for finding directional object, okay? It's used, used for finding stationary objects, sorry to say. I don't know what's wrong with my data. And for tracking dynamic objects. And the key to finding APC is the P key. We're going to show us in the next scenario. What do we use APC for? We use it for finding stationary object, finding dynamic track, correctly sizing st stationary objects, but we cannot use it for an attempting dynamic object, okay? If I find a missing dynamic track while in APC, what's the step I take to annotate it? Draw a box around the point seen. You cannot draw a point around this, so you have to turn off APC, and use um, the minus and plus keys to find the object to move around frames. Okay, I'm going to show us that in the next lesson how to move around frames with the um, with the plus and minus keys. And then we have interpolation. Interpolation tries to predict predict the next movement of a car when you have uh, inputted the keyframe. A keyframe is like a, uh, it's like drawing a box and arranging an object properly. 
when we have other frames so that the they can be easily navigation around that uh, object okay should you draw a keyframe in every frame no you shouldn't draw a keyframe please watch that video watch that video you understand why i said no so interpolate helps to predict the next movement of that car after you have um you have drawn after you have drawn a keyframe and another keyframe between the two keyframes interpolate help to predict where the car will be between those two frames i'm going to show you that all right now this video talks this um this this um this part of this tutorial talk about echo echo sounds okay echo not echo sounds echo in um a 3d view we have this point here this is not actually the car this one two three four five six points they are not part of the car but because of the movement of the car we have this point here okay this is sometimes error and we can have them in front or behind the car all right and then this is another spotted echo we can see that this part too are not part of the car we see boy shaped like the car in some projects you are asked to annotate to add the echo in some others you are asked to remove the echoes not to add the echoes to it all right um how to find echoes and you need to move back from frame to frame to find echo please watch this video i beg you i'm going to upload the one hour so that people can get it clearly i'm going to also upload this video so that people can get it easier what should you do when you see echo points include them in the object no see what the instruction of that project says okay that's better when you see it you know what to do but to see, it has to talk about the ground the ground um the object in relation to the ground okay what's the relationship between the ground and the object is it smooth is it not smooth is it up and down is it zigzag is it he just talked about the 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 relationship between the object and the ground point okay um please watch this video and you will understand it better so i'm going to do this scenario too yeah so here we're going to learn more All right, I'm coming. All right. So, um, we're going to start like this. Good. I'm going to give it time to load this dark spot here until those this is a 20 frame i'm going to leave it to load okay why we load let's play a little bit should we yeah let's play a little bit let's play a little bit why it loads Okay, shall we? Should we? 
Yes, that's been lit too. All right, remember W S A D and right, left. If you want a very fast movement, you can press Shift and W. It moves faster. Okay. If you want it fast turning, you press Shift. It's faster than just a Shift. It runs faster. Okay. Shift it on faster. How to make things do better is to press the shift key. So F help us to locate our self-driving cars very quickly. Okay. So we've located our self-driving cars by pressing the F key. No matter how far we are, it's going to help us find it. Alright. Now I'm going to show us APC. Remember I said to find the APC we need to to get APC, we need to press the P key. Did you see something? Yeah, I told us APC can be used to find dynamic paths. Let's put up this keyboard so that you can see. I believe I've taught you about the key, so let's let's do business here. So um. I told you the APC is off now. Okay. Now put the APC on. We can see that there's a track here. Yeah. So this this point APC is uh aggravated uh cloud point. So we can see point cloud, aggravated cloud point, point cloud. Okay, so um, we can see this here. We can see the track of a vehicle here. We can increase our APC to 20 from here. It helps us better. Wow. So we can see that a car actually passed here. APC has helped us to detect, detect. But at this point, we have to now turn off APC. And then look for this car and we've seen it never mind then never mind well we have to do something again oh no Didn't see that, but okay. So we have to look at the we have to look at the key frames. We look we have to look at the frames okay so we are seeing that very cool but we have to look at it where it was um it had more fun so plus help to move forward minus move backward should i show us from the keys plus move forward minus move backward okay when you add the shift it move five times backward five times okay then when you add the shift it move five times forward all right five times forward Five times backward with the shift and the plus and minus. Minus is one, um, just the minus and plus key is a one frame, but with the shift, it goes five times. All 
All right, so let's put all this and continue. So I told those APCs used for finding the track, and we can find the track here. We have to turn it up to be able to annotate. Then we have to shift and shift. Now we have a good point. We have a good flat point. So we go down. We go down. I press the F key to go down there. Then we move with our W key. Turn to the left. Move to the right. Move to the left. Turn again a little bit. Then move upward. Yeah, we got the car. So we're going to draw. Okay. And what do we label it? Let's check. Camera view. What is this? All right. It's a car. It's a car. Okay. So we need to label it. A car. If you don't label it, you cannot drag it, okay? So, here, here, we need to check, the, check um, we need to put the direction of heading. I think, no, it's more, okay. So, that's the overhead view, we go to this view, now, I prefer it like this. A little up because of the bottom Z. And um, we have some space here. So this guy had an echo. You can see the echo here. Okay, that's from 11. Let's do a shift backward. Oh, we can't find our car. So Let's press the F key. So we're going to drag this, this, and put the prediction here. This is where it should be. This is where the car should be. All right. Avoid too much sizing. You can keep the. You can keep the the um, keep changing the the what they call it the direction okay so we can see that there's an issue here we need to push this car this way let's check this again push it this way and um all right fine let's see here okay so now let's see what happened between this we're going to go one frame. Remember, we just had keyframe at six and eleven. Okay, so let's go one more frame. Frame seven, you see, it's still within the box. Frame eight within the box. Frame nine within the box. Frame ten, almost within the box, but there's something happening here. We're going to check this again. Okay. Now, let's shift frame six. Frame one. Let's give it a good annotation if you want to come back to that. You will see that um, it will adjust well. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Let's go forward. You see, this is still annotated well. Only that the directional heading is a little bit. Um, okay, let's get in. All right, so. Buffer is lower. So we, we now come back, come down here. Okay, that's a car. I think we have an attribute to fill. Is a car stationary? No, it is dynamic because it is moving. 
right so when you are done with the tax you press the escape key and then it gives you the button to submit all right you submit it now okay resume my result so we got 100 percent here too so um that is that about introduction of giving bedrocks for um, this kind of tax for 3d tax that is that for that so okay let's um let's go back here yeah so well done okay um that's that so thank you for joining us today thank you for subscribing please join the telegram group and ask your question i'll be people are ready there to answer those questions thank you for subscribing and thank you have a lovely day god bless you